We know one of the biggest cracks in our healthcare system is a lack of access to a family doctor. And that means follow-ups to screenings for diseases like cancer are more likely to fall through the cracks. Healthcare professionals are looking for creative ways to try to help people keep on top of their health. The Ottawa Hospital is one such organization doing that. They're appointing a so-called super screener to help people make sure that they get the referrals and the follow-ups that they need for proper care. Joining us this morning is that super screener, Sarah Junkin Hepworth. She is a nurse practitioner. Great to talk to you this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Just to give people some numbers around what we're about to talk to, a national survey from this year published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal found that about six and a half million Canadians do not have a family doctor. They're relying on emergency or walk-ins. So how does that trickle down affect cancer screenings? Yeah, so it has a huge effect. So um, traditionally, primary care is the setting that's used to provide both education about cancer screening and also the screening itself. Um, so with the lack of primary care providers, there's a huge inequity, this huge group of people um, who isn't able to access the cancer screening. So in Ontario, where, where I am, we have uh, four provincial screening programs, breast, cervical, colorectal, um, and lung cancer screening. Um, people can self refer for average risk breast screening or average risk colorectal screening, but they need a referral for high risk breast, high risk colorectal screening, um, any lung screening, and of course they need a clinician to complete their cervical screening, their pap test. And what we, um, go ahead, sorry, Sarah. Go ahead. And though that's where our program comes in, right? They don't have this clinician, that's where we can fill that gap. So what we've read in some of the reports that have come out is it's not just the screening, but it's also the follow-up and the referrals that happen after that. What does your job as a super screener actually entail? Yeah, so I have two main aspects of my, my work. So the first is the clinical care. So people will self-refer to our program and they'll have a 30-minute telephone consultation with me to go over the cancer screening and their own risk factors. And we order the test that they are eligible for. Um, and then of course, if there's an in-person appointment required for their cervical screening, we'll do that with myself as well. Um, and then of course, we talk about the results of their screening, whether they're normal or abnormal. So we can tell them when they'd be next due for for screening or if there is concern for cancer on their screening we go that step to have that referral to a cancer center or an assessment center for diagnostic diagnostic confirmation um, and manage make sure they get the care that they need yeah sir what i love so but, much about this is the consistency that it provides in mm -hmm. care right and just the comfort and the security that that gives to clients i understand you know you guys have been very innovative in some cases your team has actually ventured outside the hospital and and an example for our viewers is when you visited an amazon warehouse you gave out cards for cancer screenings what kind of results has the program produced so far yeah. yeah, so our program is also focusing largely on outreach opportunities to make sure we can educate people who have traditionally not had access to screening um, and provide that service to actually give them that screening. Um, and we've been really happy with the results of our program so far. Uh, we know we're reaching people that need to be reached. 20% of the screening tests that we've ordered are for people who are uh, um, eligible for screening but have never had that screening done before. And 54% in addition um, of the tests that are ordered are for people who are eligible, eligible for screening but are late in getting their screening. So we know they're experiencing barriers and we're, we're helping circumvent some of that. You know what, I, I love this because it provides a bit of a port in the storm for people who can feel very lost, especially if you've had a diagnosis and you've, you've had testing done already. I can imagine that other healthcare systems are, are watching this closely. What kind of attention has roles like yours created? Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're brand new. Um, we're the first of our kind in, in Ontario, and we just launched in July. Um, I know we've definitely had some, some questions from other regions across the province and getting questions about our program and, and how we're working. Um, and so we are hoping that this model can be used in the future and expand. As somebody from the client side, I just, I love this idea so much. Thanks for coming on your morning to talk more about it, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.